Great. Uh, Aaron Toombs, Live Wire Calgary. I'm not sure if this is for Dr. Toom or the Minister. Um, really, the question is, why Why now? What was the tipping point that made this a necessity to hold at this point in time? So that's a great question. So, so Canada's productivity has always had a challenge. It is not itself a new issue generically. But in normal times, we are about 10% behind the United States level of labor productivity. That's where we were in the early 80s, for example. So the, the widening of the gap today at the speed that we have seen it widen today makes this moment uniquely important to redirect our attention towards addressing this issue. So circumstances have rapidly changed, and that means it's important to know why and what we can do about it. Uh, Dr. Toon, what, what's the state of the research into this, this area, and how important is it to disseminate that research to business leaders, to policymakers, to the people who are really going to be implementing uh, any kind of changes? Yeah, great question. So we have a lot of insight already from past research that is done in lots of areas, from tax policy to trade policy and, and what have you. And so part of the summit will be bringing out ideas that are themselves not new, but perhaps thought of in different ways that reflect the current moment. But there are other challenges that we face that are relatively unique. Think about inflation. You know, we have seen inflation at the levels that we saw at peak two in 2022 before, but not since the 1950s have we seen it accelerate as quickly as we have. And so there's scope for new and novel research insight to be applied to the current moment to better understand why we're in the circumstance that we're in. Great, next question. Chris Brown, Cross Border Network. This is for the minister and the doctor, if possible. Uh, minister, you talked about how this is not just a provincial priority, it needs to be a federal and a municipal one. As I have a lot of listeners and readers who are municipal focused, what role does the municipalities play in increasing productivity across Alberta and across Canada? Well, I think it, it, it is a, a challenge that will need to be addressed at every level of government. Um, if you look at regulation specifically, um, we've lived in silos um, a lot in the past. Uh, we do need to all pull the same direction. A lot of that can be around uh, permitting, I guess, around municipal jurisdiction. And just increasing timeliness brings more uh, cost certainty, less risk to investors, um, speeds it up and does increase productivity and keep costs down. That would be, be one example. Uh, but this is, it is very important that we all um, come to the table, don't work in silos, and address this together. Does the doctor have anything to add to that? Sure, maybe just quickly by noting that Canada is one of the most decentralized countries in the world. You know, we do not just have one government, we have thousands of governments. And part of our productivity challenge is ensuring that these governments, as the minister put it, don't operate in silos. Just simple differences in rules, regulations, standards, and certifications creates real friction to the national economy in Canada. So that would be interprovincial trade costs. And so municipalities, provinces, each play a role in helping overcome that and other challenges. Now, stick, sticking with you, doctor, if possible, uh, symposium is not going to be until October. So we're potentially not going to see any changes until the new year. Is that too long of a time? Is this too long of a time when you're talking about things that we need to do two years ago, a year ago, and we're not going to potentially see any changes until 2025, 2026? Well, from the organizational perspective, two and a half months is going to go by really quickly. I promise you that. But it is important to ensure that the insights and recommendations that we put forward are well thought through and reflect the reality on the ground for businesses, reflect the latest research insight uh, from academia and elsewhere. And so getting it right is more important uh, than rolling something out quickly and potentially making the situation worse. Good morning, this is for Minister Horner. Uh, Phoenix from City News. Sir, this is just a little off topic. This is about yesterday's Green Line announcement, the city announcing a $700 million overrun. It was mentioned by the uh, uh, the Premier that uh, we have a, a cost and that's pretty much it. Now with this new news, is the government or how is the government responding to the, the announcement of this overrun uh, affected by the city? Well, I, th I think I would uh, stand behind the comments of the Premier and I believe the Transportation Minister as well. Obviously this is very fresh, so it's not like it's been something that's been across our desk. But I believe even the federal government's been clear that if there's a scope change 
uh, it would need to be uh, reapplied and reassessed. So er, early days, but it, it hasn't crossed my desk yet. Thanks, sir. You have a follow-up, Phoenix? No, let's go ahead. Okay. Next question. So I'm intrigued by the format of this conference with finance ministers being invited as well as uh, the federal finance minister. How do you prevent this from just turning into a grouse fest by finance ministers at the federal finance ministers when you've come to discuss productivity? Uh, I don't think that's a, I, I don't think that's going to be a problem at all, honestly, Kelly. Um, one thing that was evident to me, I haven't had this job long, but there's a real desire from the finance ministers, the provincial finance ministers, uh, to not just get into our FPT meetings and, and fight over how we chop up the pie, but a, a real desire to talk about how we grow the pie. So I, I think that our intentions are, 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 very, uh, are, are very pure in that, in that sense. Um, I, I do hope Minister Freeland comes. Uh, we sent a letter out, I believe, yesterday. And I did already invite all of the provincial finance ministers at our last uh, our last FPT call. So um, I'm hoping that they that they show up. But uh, no no intention to turn this into anything other than productive. Um, I think we have we need awareness for the issue. We need to to use language that resonates with Albertans and Canadians about why it's important. And then we need to come up with with some solutions. It was uh, clear to me, we, we were met with the, the Bank of Canada governor uh, in December when we had our meetings in Toronto. And this is top of mind for, for him uh, and that, that institution. Um, so everybody's talking about it. No one's really putting forward any, any solutions or uh, applicable policy changes yet. And that's what this is about. And for Minister Horner or Dr. Toome, I'm just wondering when we talk about quality of life, uh, in the past, we've talked about that in regards to wages, but now there's this big gap between wages and housing costs that many people are concerned about. How do you plan to address that in, in this conference? Yeah, I think it'll come up pretty naturally as one of the many factors of increasing costs, costs of living. Um, and when I speak about uh, making this relevant to, to Albertans and Canadians, I think that's, that's what we're talking about. It's you can't have wage growth without investment attraction into this country and this province and increased productivity. So it, it all ties together. I know housing is front of mind uh, for many across the country, including Albertans, but it'll be a large part of the conversation. Dr. Toom, do you have anything to add to that? Okay. Uh, good morning, Minister. Kyle Bax with CBC. I just wanted to ask how you would describe the level of investment in the province right now, and then also specifically when it comes to data centers, why that has become a, a, one of the priority areas for the government. Uh, well, I'd say the data center conversation is more of a, a priority for um, you know that industry. We're seeing that happen across North America and, and, the, and the world with uh, the changes to AI recently. Um, it's very important to our government, I would say, to get that right, just because I, I would say we already have challenges with our electrical system in this province, so a real balance of, of how um, we allow that sector to grow without growing it on the backs of the ratepayers and understanding what the benefits are to the taxpayers of, of, the, pro of the province. And we've seen that internationally. I think Ireland's made some changes. You, you really need to get an understanding of what the, you know, the return on investment would be for the province. So I'd say it's, it's important to us to get it right. Um, so that's kind of why we're digging into it.